Hey guys, it's Drew from Smart Home Makers. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to look at Zigbee devices and I'm going to learn how we can control them in Home Assistant. My end goal is to be able to use these two Zigbee devices, a motion sensor and a temperature sensor in automations in Home Assistant. So do we actually need to buy? I left you a link down in the description below that's going to bring you to this screen over here. So I created this quick kit to get you started with Zigbee. So I use a Combi 2 stick over here from Dresden Electronic and it costs around $30, 30 pounds roughly. And this USB stick, you just take it and you just plug it into your Raspberry Pi or your Android or wherever you have your home system installed on. What I would advise to use is an extension cable and this will depend on where you've got your home assistant server because the Zigbee receiver needs to be able to, you know, send the signal around and receive the signal from the devices. So first I used it without this USB extender. I had issues and uh, things were dropping out. But since I purchased a USB extender and you can purchase any USB extender, you can actually get a, get solve this problem really. So around, I think three feet or six feet should be enough. And here also, I've also got the two uh, sensors that I use there, an Akara temperature sensor and an Akara motion sensor. Now let's go into Home Assistant and let's see how we can actually pair it all together. So now that you've purchased all the Zigbee devices and we've got Home Assistant up and running, and if you're new to Home Assistant and you want to learn about Home Assistant, I've got a link down in the description below for that. But what we'll do is you need to put the USB stick into the device that you have and just restart your home assistant because it's going to make it easier. Now let's go to the integrations tab. So let's go into configurations, integrations. Now click the add integrations button, search for Zigbee. And in here, you got to look for the serial device path. Now this is the only little tricky part of this video. Click on it. Now, if you have this combi two stick, you're good. You can also use a different type of Zigbee controller if you wish. I'm going to leave full instructions to the full official documentation and you can find all the different types of hardware you can actually use to achieve this. But I've got it all connected up here and it's all working fine. Now if you have any issues, you can go to Supervisor System Hardware and you can find out over there if it's all working. So click on the Dresden Electronic and I'm going to click Submit. So that has been picked up now, so you can add an area or you can do that later. I'm going to skip that for now, so I'm going to click finish. And now here we have our beautiful integration, but we're not done yet. So let's go into the Zigbee home automation. So click on uh, where it says one device. And you can have this button down here below. And click add device. So at this stage, we were searching for Zigbee devices. And now we can take our device, it's like this, and if you can see this, and I can put this in pairing mode. It's flashing blue. Okay, so the device is ready to use. So here we can change the device name. So we can call this, um, what we'll do is leave it as it is for now, and then I'll uh, change it later, and I'll show you how to do it. But anyway, here, if you wanted to, you could just change this to whatever you wanted. Okay, so we can add our second device now. Uh, here we go. So we've got this Weber device and it's ready to go. If you're getting value out of the video and you want more people to find it, then smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And we can stop searching now. Awesome, so we have our three devices, a motion sensor, a Weber, and we have the Zigbee Combi 2 stick. Now what you would do is you do a similar thing with all of your Zigbee devices, get them all configured in Home Assistant. Now we can actually move and along and rename them appropriately. So let's go back to the initial page. We can see our entities. So click here over here. So if you're not sure about the differences between entities and uh, devices, I've got a video here where I'm gonna put up here. It's gonna to explain to you there's some basic concepts with Home Assistant. But basically, very briefly, an entity uh, is the property. So for example, in this temperature sensor, it has temperature and humidity and pressure. Those three um, features, let's say, are the en are entities, uh, but they're in one device, okay? So in here, we have different type of, uh, we have the battery levels and we have all the information linked. And these are linked to the device that we've paired in here. So what we can do and what we should do is we should go through these and we should rename them all to something quite meaningful. To do that, just click on one 
and rename this temperature sensor and rename the entity ID. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call it something like this. Okay, so it's gonna be fridge temperature. So that's where this is going. I'm just gonna call it fridge temperature. I'm going to click update and that's done. You can see it here it's been renamed. So now go ahead and rename all of your entities to something meaningful. Once that's done, automatically Home Assistant is going to add in these uh, devices and entities to the Lovelace dashboard. So you can see them right here and I can click on the fridge temperature and I can see the temperature is 22 degrees probably because it's not in the fridge. Now if you're completely new to Home Assistant and you want to find out more about it, I've got a free Home Assistant course, link in the description down below. I'm in the process of rebuilding my smart home, so see a lot of videos here on YouTube. But if you want to find out the complete full package and the behind the scenes, there's a link in the description down below to my full Home Assistant how to build a smart home course. Before you go, I'm going to leave you with some video ideas here on YouTube so you can actually continue enjoying it and finding out new ways to control your smart home. Stay safe and see you in the next one.